Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Blue Jay Acres. I am Noelle and thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you decide to give a big thumbs up and stick around and hit that subscribe button. All right, so thank you guys so much for being there for me and for hanging in while we have been sick. Um, I'm starting to be on the mend, so that's wonderful. My voice still sounds a little bit off, but it has come back <laughs> so that's good news all right we're gonna do a full day of meals um, today what we're eating on a tight budget so we're gonna go on and just do breakfast lunch and dinner and then wrap it up okay so for breakfast today I'm gonna do some apple pie oats um, so I'm gonna start with just a little bit of coconut oil and I'm gonna heat that up I am out of regular milk at the moment so I'm gonna use coconut milk let me turn this on and get that nice and melted. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but I opened my window because we're at like 60 degrees and I'm trying to air the sickness out of the house. And it's, it sounds so delightful. The birds chirping, the signs of spring coming. I know about you guys, we are done with winter here. I'm just gonna cook these apples. And I'm going to add a little bit of cinnamon. And I have this apple pie spice that'll pick it up. I got it for some kind of recipe. I don't remember why. So I might as well use it in here. And here, all I did was I mixed some coconut milk and water because the coconut milk is so thick. We're going to add this at the end. So I just kind of mixed it together. I'm going to set it aside. So a few apples. I just want to cook them a little bit. So we got a notice yesterday. They are going to cut our power um, to be working on stuff from 9 to 11. We'll have no power in the house, no electricity. So I'm getting breakfast done a little earlier than I normally would. It's only 8 30. We don't usually eat until like 10 or 11. But I have to have breakfast to take my medicine and so we have to have breakfast early. So I also have some brown sugar here. I'm going to tell you guys, making your own brown sugar, which is molasses and white sugar, is game changer. Everything tastes so much richer, and it's just so much better. I will not buy brown sugar again. It's just so much better. Okay. Next, I'm going to add some quick cook oats. That's just what I have open. No rhyme or reason. I'm going to add water. So if you haven't guessed, we're making apple pie oats. We need more water. One of my commenters said, uh, or one comment on one of my videos is, why don't I ever use salt? Well, here, this is salt, and I do use it actually all the time. Maybe in that video I cut it out or something, but I use salt and everything. And. A little bit of salt helps with the sweetness and stuff in the oats. I'm going to add some of this coconut milk as well, the coconut milk that I mixed with water. Um, and since I'm adding the coconut milk, I'm not going to add any butter. Normally I add a little bit of butter to our oats, but this has that fattiness that will give it that richness all by itself without adding any kind of butter. 
That's just the way my grandmother always made oatmeal. Cream of wheat, any of it, was always a pat of butter. And it definitely makes it taste much better. You, you notice when it's not there. I'm gonna add some of this vanilla powder. It's something I bought long ago. I never use it, I don't know why. I'm gonna add a little bit of that as well. I'm out of vanilla upstairs and honestly, my lungs can't handle going up and down like crazy. So I'm gonna stir that in. Charles is doing a meeting down here. I'm trying not to get Luke up. Everybody's pretty much sick, except for Charles. He didn't get it. Um, but the virus side, everybody else got. I'm the only one that it went into all kind of mess. Thank God, I'm the only one. All right. Luke has also not gotten it yet, but I think that he is getting it. Um, and it was a fever. Everybody had a fever, um, except for me. <laughs> I don't ever get fevers, I don't know why. But they all had a fever, and then it goes into a cold. And for me, it was, uh, it went into a sinus infection. And so when the doctors came and saw us, we use urgent care on wheels. Um, so the doctors come to you, to your house. It's something that's offered here, and it's a game changer. It's life, life saving. I love it. And they come here, and they can do everything that you can do actually in an emergency room. They said, obviously, they do stitches, they do broken bones, x-rays, anything. But they don't do um, a couple things that you would get at urgent care, or at an a, um, emergency room. But they do more than urgent care does. So it's just, it's a really good service. So anyway, they came and I had a sinus infection, I had ear infection, I had, she said it's not strep, but it's definitely a throat infection in the back of my throat, just not in my tonsils. And it had all gone to my chest. So I got my yearly bronchitis. And so it is hard for me to do a lot of breathing right now. So going up and down the stairs a lot gets heavy on my chest, but I've started my steroids, my breathing uh, inhaler, and my uh, antibiotics. And so, as you can see, I got my voice back. <laughs> and I still just probably sound a mess, and I will for a few days, but I'm feeling much better other than I'm just having a hard time with my breathing. So if it sounds like I'm struggling with catching my breath, it's because I am. I just have to just still take it easy. Um, but I am on the mend. And as long as I take it easy, in a, in a week or so, I should be good as good. Good as gold. So how I'm going to serve it is just the oats in a bowl. I'm going to top it with a little bit of the powdered sugar, or the brown sugar, sorry. That'll get all melty on there before I serve it. And a little bit of cinnamon. And that is breakfast. It's got to cool for a minute, and then I'll let Charles taste it for you if we don't lose power first, because he's in the meeting. Okay, so I just wanted to show you if you look when it's all melty. It makes like this crust on top. It really is like having then an apple pie for breakfast. So for lunch today, oh, I'm spilling it. It is stuffed full. <laughs> Those that are eating lunch, because not everybody's even eating. Um, I think mostly just Ronnie and Charles are eating lunch. I have leftover chili from last night. I made some chili in the crock pot. Okay, so now we're going to start dinner. So I have one of these shoulder roasts that we had gotten from the pig that we got. Um, it's one of the last few things I have remaining <laughs> we had got in August. And so I'm just going to heat that up here, just kind of brown it, and then we're going to bake it. I'm going to start with a little bit of oil in my pan, just to kind of help with browning it. 
Then I'm just gonna add the meat to just sear. All right, while we're waiting on that to sear, I'm gonna answer questions. Um, so I've got a couple that I was gonna answer tonight while we're cooking dinner. One was, talked about my handy dandy pot holders here. And that they wish that I use something bigger in, in niceness, feared that something will happen. My kids make me these pot holders. Uh, they have many years ago. I need to get Luke to make me some. They're my favorite. I use them always. I think they are the best pot holders ever. It's this little red thing that you weave these little pot loops through. <laughs> thing. I don't know what it's called. But they have made me so many and it's all I use. It's what I love. I do have a couple like this acorn that's a little bit bigger. But that's the one that I love and that's the one that I use. And that's why. And I, like I said, that's a good thing I need to do with the uh, Luke and Thea wants to do. Okay, so another one of the questions that I got was butchering the animals. Is that something that we're going to do like some homesteaders do? Is that something we're going to not do? So chickens we're going to do ourselves. And that should be taking place probably in the next four to five months. We should actually have our first ones going. Uh, we're going to do an online class on that um, so that we can learn how to do it the right way. The cow or our cows that we will have butchered, we will not. We have no intention of doing that ourselves. We will send that to the butcher. Um, in fact, sirloin will go the very end of December. Um, we already made that appointment. Then the pigs. So the pigs, the, the reason we picked the breed we did, they're called Kuni Kunis. And some have said you've never even heard of this breed. Um, when we looked up those breeds, one, they're supposed to be the sweetest pigs out there. So very safe to have around the kids and just a great addition to a small farm. Two, they're mostly grass and hay fed. They eat very little grain. We bought one bag of grain and we still, it lasted two weeks. Um, so they eat very little. They love scraps, they love hay, and they love to eat on the pasture like a cow does. So they're cheaper to raise. They're also, the meat is supposed to be really marbly and rich. And it's compared to more like steak and beef type quality of meat. Um, and the pork, is, the fat is supposed to have a really good flavor too for the lard. So those are all things that we, we like about this breed. The other thing that we like is that they're small. They don't get to be great pigs. So we're, we're gonna get two pigs our friend is raising for us this year. As our litters happen, we will need four of these to equal two of those. Um, but we're paying a whole lot less than raising them and in their feed and everything else. And they are small enough that if we took a course and once we are comfortable and at that point, that is something that we could consider trying to do ourselves. Once we are, like I said, to that point and <laughs> feeling comfortable, uh, that's something we would actually want to go to like a workshop. Um, some of the other homesteaders actually do workshops. We would want to physically go to one and learn like that. Let's get back to the meat. I'm going to turn it on its side. So I hope that answers questions about that and maybe gives you guys a little bit more insight onto what a kumi kumi pig is. They're also very hairy um, instead of, you know, you don't think of a pig as being hairy. They have very coarse hair. They're both very sweet. He is way sweeter than her, believe it or not. Um, he was raised though with the kids all over him and everything like that and she was not so i think that's the difference there they're also we got them both for a hundred dollars a piece which was a very good deal and um we're very happy about that so that's why we chose the food and food. all right next question Okay, now we're gonna flip it again. Another comment that I get is, uh, we have too many desserts. It's not necessary to have dessert all the time. 
Why do we have so many desserts? So, <laughs> dessert. We are a dessert loving family. That's just how it is. I was always that way. My grandmother's been that way. She's probably who I got it from. I used to finish the night with something sweet. Charles is that way. All my kids are that way. Um, and so we do. We have desserts. And they said I'd save a lot of money uh, if I didn't do dessert. But I, because I make everything really from scratch, uh, probably 90% of what we cook is from scratch, this is really shooting out. I would say that that's really, it wouldn't save us that much money. I'm not using crazy amount of ingredients, crazy ingredients. Um, the only thing that I did use, which I'm going to talk to you because there's a few changes coming to the groceries and stuff like that. I'm going to bring that up with you guys on the first. But with that, um, I'm going to start cutting back on some of the like butter and stuff like that. That is a little bit more of the expensive ingredients, but it really doesn't cost that much to make dessert. Not when you're making it from scratch and you're using basic pantry items. Uh, and it's just something that we enjoy. And I feel like you can eat on a really, really tight budget, but it doesn't have to be painful or you don't have any treats or anything like that. Uh, you just have to change how you cook and it can all fit in. And we very much make dessert fit in. So, all right, back to the roast. One side left. I'm gonna have to hold it for this one. Now for some reason, if I'm heating up this oil, it is cooling off a little bit. This burner is so weird. And this is one I always cook on high, and I know people say that all the time. Why? Well, it's because this burner is just how it is. It works really good on high. It doesn't work very good anywhere else. But for right now, for some reason tonight, it is working some. Okay, I'm just going to brown this bottom just a little bit more. And then we'll get this in the oven. It's 3 o'clock. Oh, I don't know. Sight. Is it 419? That's the time it is. 419. So I'll probably eat about 6. Tonight. This isn't too bad. Okay, so now I'm going to take this roast that's been browned everywhere. And I'm going to just move it over here. Oh, shoot down everywhere. All right, so to this, I'm going to add some honey. I'm going to add some soy sauce. Add some of this crushed Korean red peppers. Put on the top. That'll be so good. Kind of just stick, kind of make like a crust on top with it. And I also have this. Um, Japanese seasoning. I'm going to add some of that on here as well. Just using up some different things that I don't use all the time. And I'm also going to add a little bit of this pomegranate molasses. Again, just random things that I have laying around that need to use stuff. This is actually, I love this stuff. It's so good. And just a little bit of red wine vinegar. Just a little. I'm also going to cut up an onion in here. And some garlic. And a little bit of this ginger paste. I'm 
I'm just gonna kind of rub that in with all that seasoning. And I'm gonna cover this. And I'll uncover it in about an hour. And hopefully this turns out We'll see. It's just something I'm just kind of throwing together. No recipe or anything. I'm just using what I got. Okay. I am also going to make some oven rice. If you've never had oven rice, and my grandma used to make it all the time, it tastes really, really good. So I'm going to start with the rice. I'm going to add a couple cups of washed white rice. That's one cup. cups of white rice. To that I'm going to add four cups of water and I'm going to add some salt. And I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. Someone, another question was how did Charles and I meet? Um, we actually met online. Uh, he was worked a ton of hours, and I was a single mom to five children. And we both just happened to get online and met, and have been together ever since. <laughs> since the day we met. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Just happened very fast. I guess you could say it was love at first sight. All right, I'm going to add some parsley. And then some butter. And that's it. This goes covered. This is going to cook for an hour alongside the roast. So, yes, so we met online. Um, he was, like I said, working all the time. And the job he was, he was the district manager at the time for Radio Shack. And so he was working all the time. It had been almost a year since I had left my husband and um, I would be just, I would get sad sometimes, you know, and, and depressed and so I had friends that were like, you just got to get out there again, you just got to get out there. And so I did and I'm so glad I did because I definitely met the love of my life and we, we were together, it was just a whirlwind. It literally, it happened just, just like that. And he has raised all the kids, loved all the kids. Uh, Luke is ours together. He had a son, William, um, when we got together. So William and Jake are not biological brothers. Um, they are step-siblings. That's why when you hear me talk about them in their different ages, they're only six months apart. But that's why. And then all the girls are mine. And then, like I said, Luke is ours together. So that's it. That's how we met. Okay, so now on to dessert. So Charles is like kind of wanting some dump cake. I saw we had, because I had him come down and carry the laundry up for me, because it's a little bit hard for me to breathe doing that right now. And I said, um, he saw pie filling. Now after this, I have three more cans of pie filling, um, which I'm gonna share with you guys, the pantry and stuff, and, and just what's gonna change on the first, along with the budget update. But I have two more, two of these strawberry, and then I think I have two raspberry, I think a cherry, but I decided, okay, fine, but for a dump cake, if you haven't ever made one, it's so easy. You just take two cans of pie filling or a can of pie filling and a can of fruit, and you dump it into a pan, and then you top it with a yellow cake mix or a white cake mix or whatever cake mix you want to use. Then you cut up a stick of butter and you put it along the top and then you bake it. You can sprinkle nuts on top if you want. Charles isn't a fan of that, so I don't typically do that. Well, we don't have cake mixes um, because I don't buy those, and I won't be buying this stuff anymore either. We'll be canning it ourselves, but I looked it up, and you can very simply just make your own cake mix. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make like the basic cake mix to, dry, to pour on top of this. It's just dry. And then this is my last stick of butter in the fridge which is very odd for us to be out of butter. I do have a little bit in our butter dish that we keep out at room temperature, but um, this is my last stick and we're gonna use that for this dessert.
Okay, we are taking two and a half cups of flour, but we're going to spoon it in so that it's a lighter, fluffier flour instead of just scooping it in. So we're going to do that. Scrape it right across. That's one. Two. We'll do a half. Okay. Then we're going to add one and a half cups of sugar. This is a half cup. Then we're going to add a tablespoon of baking powder and a half teaspoon of salt and then it does not call for this this is when you go to make your cake you'd want to add like some vanilla but I'm gonna add this vanilla powder and um, just because I have it and I need to use it and it should give a vanilla taste and keeping it dry ingredients dry I had just gotten this at um, Walmart a long time ago, so I don't know if they still have it or not, but it adds a good vanilla flavor when you don't have the vanilla Or don't want to use wet vanilla And start together and this is your yellow cake mix Now we're going to assemble. And again, dump cakes are so easy. And once it's home canned, it's just going to be just as easy. Um, it just won't be anything, you know, store canned. With any ingredients, I don't know what they are. but I'm not gonna waste the stuff I do have. We will use it up. I'm almost out of anything that is like this. Um, I do have some taco shells and a few items, as you guys will see, that are still like, I guess considered processed food from the store. I do though still have quite a bit of canned goods to get through that are store canned. <laughs> that we will try to get through that. So I'm gonna do these two cans of the strawberries. And then just start putting on this cake mix. I'm gonna probably just store some of this for a different dump cake, because I think it's gonna be too much. says it's equal to one cake mix, but that just seems like that'd be so much. So I will say that I think the other half would be great to do another dump cake. So now I've got that ready to go. I'll just put that in a jar and label it. Then I'm just gonna take the butter. I made a mess with flour. I dropped my flour container and I lost so much flour. He's gonna vacuum it up for me real quick. That would have been my fault. I was the last one in the, in the flour. Sometimes that just happens. All right, that's it. This is gonna go into the oven now. Bright daylight. <laughs> okay, so real quick, there's Charles. Something somebody also had asked and said they they were so proud of us for sticking to budget and not going out to eat while I've been sick or having delivery or food brought in. I want to tell you when I read that comment, I looked at Charles. I said that thought never even crossed my mind. Why didn't I even think about that? It just didn't even cross my mind. 
And he said, it did mine. It but did mine. He said, but no, I didn't. Uh, and I gotta tell you, a couple things that nobody tells you when you start really cooking from scratch. And I would say I'm probably 90% of what I cook now for my family is from scratch. One day that's gonna be 100%. We're not there yet. There are just still some things that I, I do buy or I'm going through. I don't really buy anything anymore um, other than, well, that's not true. Crackers, graham crackers, that kind of stuff. Like Thea likes goldfish and his chicken tenders. So more for the boys, I do buy some of that processed food. But we are 90% of all the meals that I make is homemade. And we have been now to that extent for quite a while. And what nobody warns you about. One is, I know it's intimidating at first. Everybody says that it's so intimidating and it feels like you'd be in the kitchen forever. It really, it gets to where it's just not a big thing. You do it so much, just like anything else. It's just what you do. And I might be in the kitchen a little bit longer, but it's worth it. <laughs> it doesn't bother me at all. And, but the main things nobody talks about is once you really, really start doing it and you get better and better and better and better at it is other food doesn't taste good anymore. So like the thought of getting food doesn't even appeal to me, so I don't even think about it anymore. And Charles said he did, but not because of he wants the food, more just to give me a break. Yeah, <laughs> because when you go, like we have, we don't ever go out to eat, but on occasion, like my mom will bring something here. And like when she brought, I think it was, what did we get last time she was here? And it's been like months. But she brought, I think it was Burger King. And it was like, yeah, this so just doesn't, he's standing right here, you guys see me turn my head, but you can't see him. Um, it just didn't compare to like a homemade burger with lettuce and tomato and. Oh, that makes me think. It just didn't compare. You need to add. Did you mean to match me today? No. Yeah, he'll match you to me. Yeah. I was dressed first. <laughs> I need to make what? The McDonald's sliders again. Yeah, <laughs> The Big Mac sliders. That's the Big Mac sliders. We're going to add those. I will, I will say the KFC chicken we had was still really good. But that's because... Um, you know, I still didn't think it was that great. I, I, I thought it was really pretty good. Did I you? I won't lie. Yeah. I didn't. I'll the mashed honest. potatoes and stuff you thought was good? So, no, because I don't normally eat... I don't like their mashed potatoes, period, because they kind of taste to me, just my opinion... Like instant. That they taste like yeah, an instant they potato. Really do. And their macaroni, like their mac and cheese. Yeah, you didn't care for that either. It's not really the so style of mac like? and cheese that Just I like. The chicken, the chicken. Itself? Yeah, I do like the chicken. You know, and I will tell you what I would go to at any day or time is Mexican. That will never go away. If we were to sit in a Mexican restaurant and I got some queso and <laughs> and some cheesy enchiladas and beans That's and true. rice. I, although I will say my beans and rice are pretty comparable to the Mexican restaurant, but I can't do that cheese yet. When I get that master, it's on. I got it. <laughs> but I don't know how to make it. I'm not good at it. But, um, but nobody warns you about that though, that food just doesn't taste as good at all anymore. Just, you want the homemade food. It tastes so much I, better. I will also say that what you've been making, I, I think it, it speaks to how good it is because we haven't had to throw anything out. No, and that's the other thing nobody talks about is your garbage insanely no, no, no. shrinks. I mean, I mean like no, I know what you're food. saying, but that just reminded me of that though too, that your garbage shrinks. Like we literally were putting out two garbage cans uh, and we had the recycle bin every other week and we'd fill it and we'd fill it and they'd come and now it's like goes and it's the week and you take out one, it's not even full. He's like, well, we'll just wait. We don't even have to go every week down <laughs> Take out our garbage. You don't have all the cardboard. We don't have all the stuff, all the packaging of packaged yeah, the packaging. foods. And when I have like my big flour containers or my big um, sugar bags or whatever, they go in the recycle bin. And honestly, we're now where I'm in my big five gallon totes of all, or, or five, yeah, five gallon totes or containers. So there's nothing to throw out at all right. with that. So we have very little that we throw out now. Yeah. But. In, in what I was saying is the leftovers are all getting eaten. Yeah, like, true. they are. If we don't finish it all off at night, there's like, oh, you made chili yesterday. Like, just threw it in the crock pot. And we ate it for lunch. We ate it for lunch today. And That's because everybody was gone. sick. Nobody really wanted to eat much last night. Yeah, well, but even the point is, it, it's not going to waste. 
And I will tell you too, as, as much as it's intimidating to cook everything from scratch, it truly is the more and more and more you do it, the more you just have fun with it. And some things turn out and some things don't. And I make bread all the time, all the time, but I still have days it flops. I mean, you know, I don't ever measure anything when it comes to bread or biscuits or anything like that. And I still have yeah. days that things flop. You don't have to tell <laughs> the guy. when I say, write that recipe. He's like, well, what did you do? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Put about this in there, put about that in there. Yeah. He's like, and how am I supposed to say that? <laughs> Because I don't do computer stuff. He does all the all the recipes for you. Yeah, try <laughs> typing out the recipe when it's, well, I don't know what I put in it. <laughs> I kind of need to know that. Very true. Just little things. <laughs> but anyway, so I just wanted to kind of throw that out there because now we'll see what happens with this from scratch. Kate makes, because I'm still trying new things every, all the time because I don't want to buy the store bought anymore. And there's lots of things I haven't made. And so I'm going to try them and some are going to be good and some are going to be bad, but I never follow a recipe. <laughs> like when I find one, I'm like, oh, that looks good. And I give it to him and I'm like, but I did this and I did this and I write all over it because I just, I know what we like and what we don't like and what I think will be good or won't be good on it. And then normally it turns out pretty good. Yeah. I will take the time though to say that on the website for the recipes, we have almost 70 recipes on there now. So I've started to break sections out where I had like bread and, and baked goods kind of combined because there was only a handful of items. I kind of broke those out into two separate sections and I think I have cakes about ready to go into its own section because we've got other things out there. So I'll, you'll see some changes in kind of how it's organized um, over the next month as the recipes sure. continue to grow. Um, but Anyway, if you have suggestions, please feel free to comment, you know, on what you'd like to see different on how it's laid out. And, uh, or if you think it's just fine exactly the way it is, then that's great. But you know, if you have any comments or suggestions, please make sure you let me know. And I'll continue to try to make it as easy to use as possible. And that has to be easy enough that I would do it. So you're not going to see ads pop up all over. And if ever you did, then please let us know. Because that is not something that I would look at and not something that I would want. So there will be ads. Just to say there will be well, ads. Well, there are. That's just how it works. But on the sides, the top, or the bottom, not There should be nothing split. bugging you. It drives nothing me nuts. It drives me absolutely go nuts home. to go to a website for a recipe. And I have to scroll through six pages of just... Or you have to wait because the pop-ups are coming up and then it freezes yeah, that, and you can't even, I just click off. That I will not, not do. It. If you want a recipe, you're going to go to a recipe and that's it. <laughs> you're not going to get a big long dissertation about why this recipe is so good. You're just going to get the recipe. And somebody else said, <laughs> uh, why don't we do a cookbook? And actually quite a few of you have said that. I'm going to tell you what I do when I want to just... I really like somebody's recipes and it's somebody that I really enjoy and most of them turn out good. I just start printing out a bunch of their recipes and I put them in a binder and I just say this is my cookbook by so and so because one day we will but that's that's a lot of work and that's just not something we're ready for yet. We're very busy outside and yeah. it might doing be a, all that stuff. It might be a winter, winter 23, 24 kind of. Maybe or it might be 25. We'll, 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 see. we'll see. It depends on how well we got going on next winter. We got a lot of in-house projects that need done too. We just got a lot and we're always busy. Speaking always. of a lot, it is going on 422. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we have power That's outage right. today. I, gotta Seven, fix it. I know. I was <laughs> making a joke because I heard you earlier. Oh. <laughs> but it is, it's going on quarter to six. So I got to get down and feed pigs. Oh, they are probably ready for dinner. Yep. All right. Well, we will see you guys when this is done, and we'll let you know what we honestly think about this dry mix. Might be good, might be bad. I've made many a cakes from scratch, but I haven't made a dry cake mix to do for something like this. So I'll let you know how it is. All right. So here everything is. The dump cake, the roast. I already had a sample of it. Turned out wonderful. <laughs> to let Charles try it for you guys. The rice. And then I just opened a can of green beans. We need some fresh veggies. I'm out of frozen veggies, um, other than like tomatoes and some peppers. Uh, I think I have some frozen okra. And yeah, that's mostly all I got. So I'm gonna make Charles a plate and then he give me a taste tester for you. And we'll let you know how this turned out with the homemade cake mix. All right, Charles is gonna do his taste test and then I will go get this up for you guys. Do you season the rice? Mm-hmm. Cool. 
Thank you. I'll try can canned green beans. I didn't know that. It's alright though. You have to eat them. She didn't have to try them. <laughs> yeah, I thought it turned out really good. Mm -hmm. It's one of the last of our good pork. Eating fresh oh, pork wow. versus store bought is night and day. It is just so different. It's so hard to, to go back to the store bought. I don't think you've ever made it this way, have you? No, I just kind of wing it and throw it together. Mm. It's got a little kick. For me, it's perfect because if I drown it in the juice, it's like eating kimchi flavor type spice, mm. which I love. Very good. Let's make it again. All right, try the rice. The oven baked rice. It's good. I think I got a little bit of the pork on that one. We can put some of the drippings and stuff on it too if you want. Mm -hmm. Just tastes like rice. <laughs> I think yeah. it tastes better in regular rice. Although the rice cooker does a really good job, which is how we normally make it. Mm -hmm. But it's light and fluffy. Mm -hmm. All right, now try and see if homemade cake mix stands up to box cake mix. Then I'll give my opinion. I think it might be better. I thought it was comparable. However, I can't say that it would be a good substitute though for an actual cake mix. In this recipe, I think superb. It worked yeah. out great. Anything that you want, like as a dump cake topping, that's what I should just name it, dump cake, dump cake topping. But I wouldn't go make a cake with it unless I've tried it and I tell you it's good because I don't know. You might have to try to make a cake with it. And see, and see if, how it turns out. Yeah, be. because that turned out but as good or better than any box mix you've put on it before. It was made Very with good. love. It was made with love. Everything's made with love. My baby. Go look in the living room. Oh no, did Luke make a mess? Yeah. Alright baby, I'll go look in a minute. Alright. Okay everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope all of you have a great day or night wherever you are. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye everybody.